Okay, a little lesson on some of the components that we're going to use for our surge protectors, okay? Now first, gas discharge tubes. As you can see, there's a schematic symbol right there and a few examples, okay? These are surface mount, this and this. Um, you can get them in all kinds of configurations, all kinds of voltages. They're all labeled. This one has a spark gap on it, built right into it, okay? There's all, all different kinds of designs. Here's two together for like a uh, 220 AC or whatever. And uh, that's one of the first components that you're going to use. Understand that each one of these has a different voltage rating and a different current rating, okay? So each one will be able to handle a different amount of wattage running through it whenever there's a surge situation, okay? So in this case, the bigger the better. All right, these will probably handle in the neighborhood of 25 kiloamps. That's right, 25,000 amps instantaneous for short duration. And these are a lot smaller, so obviously they're not going to handle the same thing. Now, uh, you can even use a neon bulb. It's a gas discharge tube. All right. They actually run um, different voltages, somewhere between 50 and, and uh, 56 and uh, 80 volts, 70, 80 volts, depending on, on each one. They're slightly different because they're not perfectly manufactured. But they will discharge a high voltage. They won't handle a lot of current, but they will handle some, and especially instantaneous. So, something to think about. That's our first component. We're going to need them. And metal oxide varistors. Okay? MOVs, these change voltage, or uh, change resistance with voltage. They have ratings on them. I don't, I doubt if you could read them, but um, each one is a different voltage. The different size, once again, gives you some indication of how much current it can handle. This thing is about 4,500 amps instantaneous. 4,500 watts, uh, 4,500 amps. I forget which it was labeled as. These are, of course, less, and this is obviously a lot less. So, once again, size matters. And these are transient voltage suppressors and what's been used for many years. But they're not very fast acting. Okay. So now they have some newer devices. And these are really going to be the workhorse in our circuit. TVS diodes or transient voltage suppressor. All right. They come in all different sizes. This one here is a 5 kilowatt. Okay. And BZW50. This is a 33, so that's a 33 volt. It's a 5 kilowatt, 33 volt. Um, you have different ones. And this will handle 1.5 kilowatts. These, I know what they are, they're uh, 600 watts. Believe it or not, they're not much bigger than a match head, okay? And uh, a little hard to solder, but they're cheap. You can get a whole strip of them, um, pretty inexpensive. You can get whole strips of them, pretty cheap. So sometimes, depending on your money, <laughs> that might be what you want to use. And uh, there's tons and tons of them, all different voltages, okay? And 
different styles. But depending on your money, you might want to get these and put them together because they're less expensive. All right. Now, like I said, they're the workhorse because they work in nanoseconds. Every manufacturer is different. The different sizes are different. Whether you have a single or a bi-directional okay, diode makes a difference. The singles tend to work a little faster, um, but you can't use them in an AC circuit. So you're going to have to either put two of them together or just buy one that has two already in it. All right, A bi-directional TVS diode, and that works on AC. This will work in your DC circuits. No, you know, nice and uh, quickly. Now they'll uh, work in, like I said, nanoseconds, down to five nanoseconds or less. Some of these are in a picoseconds. Okay, so <laughs> they're getting pretty, pretty fast. Now, from what I understand, uh, you want to get at least um, probably around five nanoseconds, twenty nanoseconds somewhere in that neighborhood if you're in that range you're doing really good um, and you want to get a lot of wattage um, I believe um, there's some uh, information out there that the military uses these for their vehicles for transient voltage suppressant and uh, they're running their minimum requirement I think is to be able to suppress five kilowatts in five nanoseconds, I think. But don't quote me. Anyway, we're working around these figures. We're trying to get as close as we can to what the military might use. Um, so it's not super, super critical. And if I had a laboratory, <laughs> uh, okay, that'd be different. I don't. I got to go with my best guess. So. I need the fastest and I need the most powerful ones that I can possibly get. Now these will add up two different ways. One, voltage. Okay, if you take a 160 volt and an 18 volt and hook it up together, it'll handle 178 volts. All right, so in some situations, you might need to use two of them like that. Put them in, put them in series, okay? And they'll add voltage. Now, also, the more you put in parallel, okay, the better off you are. Each one then adds to the amperage. Doesn't change the voltage, okay? As long as these are all the same voltage, okay? Um, you get 18, 18, 18, 18, we'll say volts. That's what it'll start to uh, conduct at um, over 18 volts. Usually it's a, a volt or two above that is where it actually starts to conduct. And once again, each manufacturer is slightly different. So um, this is what we're going to use. All right. So that's, uh, that's the basics behind everything. What you need to do is come up with a circuit. A couple of gas discharge tubes, okay. If if each one of these individual tubes, okay, um, like I showed you here, all right. Each one of these individual tubes, one here and one here, um, go in the circuit for. We'll say this is a 220 VAC arrestor, okay. So that's what we're going to make first. And you need something well over arc voltage, okay? So I'm going to use 350 volt ones um, in order so that they don't conduct electricity at 110 because they will have 110 leg here and 110 leg there, 120, whatever. Um, so you have each one of these capable of 20 to 25, depending on the manufacturer, we'll say 25 kiloamps, okay? So there's 25, there's 50 kiloamps right there, just putting two of these in your circuit, 
that's an awful lot. Now, depending on the voltage that actually spikes, these may or may not even come into play. If they don't, you need more protection, and you're going to need a whole bunch of these in the circuit, even though they don't react as fast as the TVS diodes, okay? They do react, and you need them in there. And you've got to get rid of that voltage. You've got to dump it to ground. So you have a, a line one and line two and then a ground. And you have to short the voltage spikes to ground. So this will ride on your line one, line two, okay, in your 220 circuit going into your house, into your fuse box. And you'll have gas discharge tubes. I'm going to put in a couple put in two, three, no problem. The more the merrier, okay? Um, and these metal oxide varistors, I think I'm gonna just put all the same um, 130 volt metal oxide varistors. Um, you could go with 150s, 130s. Don't go over that. You want it as close to the voltage that you're working at as you can without making them conduct during normal working conditions okay so your voltage matters and what you order for metal oxide varistors matters okay and they are labeled you can look up the numbers they are there um, I don't know if I could show you or not I could try No, not too good. Yeah, there you go. You can see the numbers on them. This one happens to be an 18 volt. You saw a 180K. That's an 18 volt one. Um, but you're going to get 130s and 150s. Um, I see a lot of voltage suppressors that you purchase, and they have 200 or 250. Or 350 volts well by the time your voltage spikes up that high the damage is done to your circuits okay I, I wouldn't do that I'd ride it pretty close around 130 150 any anything like that but don't go over that um, the voltage suppression diodes I'm gonna use 160 and an 18 together so that I get 178 because peak voltage on uh, 120 volt circuit um, is 1.414 times the 120 that you get okay so I mean uh, that's what your peak is so let's see uh, 120 times 1.414 is 169 volts okay so that's your actual peak voltage constant peak voltage on an AC circuit okay you need to uh, understand AC, AC circuits if you have uh, any misconceptions on that the, you don't have 120 volts you have a, <laughs> 169 volts 170 volts at peak okay and that's what these will start working at. So you want to go just above that. So I'm at 178. So they will not conduct until they go over 178 volts. Then they'll begin to conduct. And they will continue to conduct more and more until they reach a certain point where they uh, clamp the voltage. Well, there you go. That's the circuit. That's what we need to build. Okay. All in series. Okay. For each leg for 120 volts you get into 12 volts it's different it's the same setup like this but different voltage ratings on your components okay and that's what we'll go over later how to do a 12 volt one but this is for a, a 220 240 volt um, house current all right I have them on my stuff right now I have one in my uh, fuse box and I have one in my house that I'd built 
They work fine. They don't conduct electricity unless there's a voltage spike. All right. Talk to you in a bit. I'll get to constructing uh, next. I'm going to show you what other people are doing so that you can understand where my logic comes from. And this is for hooking up to a modem. There's your ground wire. You see they're using gas discharge tube, set of resistors, and one transient voltage diode. And that's it. Okay. And this thing is rated at 10 kiloamps. 10,000 amps. Okay. There's nothing in there. This is a one-time deal. It's going to pop. It's going to absorb some of the energy from a lightning strike or a nearby lightning strike. And then that's going to be it. It's going to be all over. So that's why I'm doing the ones that I'm doing. They're doing it the way that I'm doing it. I'm adding extra double, triple, quadruple of everything. And that way I'm guaranteed that this thing will take multiple strikes and absorb all the energy before it blows up, blows in half. That's a small component. That's not going to do much. I mean, yeah, it'll do what it says it'll do on the package. But that's all it's going to do. I need something that's guaranteed to save my equipment. So I'm going to use double, triple. If I had three of these, I'd use three. I only have two uh, gas discharge tubes. I'm going to use the metal oxide varistors. I'm going to use a whole pile of them. And then the TVS diodes, I'm going to use a whole bunch of them and make sure that I got as close to a hundred thousand as I can get within reason. So I'll be using this board here to put all my components on. And uh, we'll start with the uh, gas discharge tubes and go from there. Um, sometimes, depending on the component, you might have to scooch the holes out a little bit with a small drill bit, just big enough to get the legs in. So, um, I'll come back and show you what I've got whenever I get that far.